Well, I think the biggest key is having great guys around him. He's coming as a highly talented player, a very talented young man, has a lot of skills, a guy that plays inside, outside, handles the ball, plays well on the defensive side of the ball. And I think the biggest key, he'll be able to come in and play the way he knows how to play. It won't be pressing because he got older guys around him, experienced guards around him that can make plays and allow him to do the things he needs to do to be successful, which is kind of play in the post, play off the block, face up and make plays. And when you have shooters around, experienced guards, that really helps. How important is it going to be for him to get stronger than this right now? Well, I, th I think you can make that case for 90% of the guys that come in as freshmen. The strength part is the biggest key. Uh, I mean, you look at Jabari Bird, Jordan Matthews, Samson, guys have made jumps. And I think that's the biggest key with any guy coming in uh, to gain strength. And I think that's the one thing that he spends a lot of time on. He's really taking pride in as we were texting back and forth this morning. It's one of the biggest things. He understands what he needs to do, and, and that's to improve his strength. But the biggest key, I don't think he'll walk around as if he's a bodybuilder, but he'll get stronger with the summer workouts. How does he kind of fit the mold of, of what you want to deal with here? You know, for years uh, since I was a player, starting with, with Glenn Robson on my team, that, that four position is a vital position because pretty much our offense flows through that guy. So he has to be able to handle the ball, make decisions, pass the ball, to post up, to play on the perimeter. Um, so a lot of things we do will go through that position. So it was very important for us to land a guy of this caliber to take that next step because he can make decisions with the basketball. His high school coach talked about how coachable he is, how eager he is to learn. Is that your impression of him? What do you, what do you see in terms of his coachability and that sort of stuff? I think so. And that's one of the things you watch it and you talk to him. He understands the game when you talk basketball to him. He has a feel for the game. He likes to watch basketball games. Because sometimes you have guys that are good players, but they don't spend a lot of time watching and studying the game. And I think he spends a lot of time you know, trying to understand, understand the game, whether it's college or the NBA game to grow as a basketball player. And I think his high school coach, Lou Ritchie, really helped him in his growth as a young man when it comes to basketball. Did a great job putting him in position to be successful. I just think it speaks volumes about a guy of this caliber when he has a point guard that's been with it for so long that allowed him to be successful as it is. And they, they play well with each other. And I think that speaks volumes about him as a basketball player and as a person. Without comparing him to somebody, whose game is he similar to? Well, I just, I just think it's what happened when, when you say names and people automatically assume that's what it should be or you could be. But, but, but guys, that, you know, when you're talking about 6'10", almost 6'11", you know, Chris Boss, those type of guys that can face up, can make plays, can play off the blocks and post up deep uh, just because he does so many things with the basketball. And he, he's one of those guys that, I mean, he can have, you know, 15, 10, and 10 one night. He can have 27 and 7. So just a guy that stuffs the stat sheet in so many ways. He blocks shots. He runs the floor. He's a really good pass. He can, I mean, He's probably one of the few guys I've seen at that size that shoot floaters effectively, uh, and that's impressive. How does he fit into like pick and roll actions? Oh, he'll be fine because he's also a guy that will we'll probably run pick and rolls for him to handle the ball and to make teams adjust to that because he can make plays off the dribble and he can handle the ball. And that's, that's something a lot of big guys probably aren't used to seeing or not used to defending. So kind of the way that they use uh, Wisconsin and Kaminsky Very similar. Very similar. And again, you have to make adjustments. And, and, and with the guys that we have that are able to shoot the ball and make decisions, it can be tough to guard. Ivan has a lot of times said that he thinks he's the missing piece or one of the missing pieces to the team from last year. What big problems do you think he might be able to help from the team from last year? Well, I wouldn't necessarily say big problems because um, you, you had a, a sound team last year. I just think when you replace a David Kravitz, who's a very talented guy, a guy that was in the trenches, battled. Uh, really kept us afloat on the interior uh, and carried a lot of weight. Uh, and I think with Ivan Rapp coming in, with, with Kingsley returning, uh, Cameron Rooks returning, those guys are playing well right now. So now he doesn't have to be a center where he's down there banging. He can be his, at his position and do it at the level he needs to do it at. But again, I go back to the fact that when you have the experience around him, now he doesn't have to come down and feel like you have to score 20 points every night, get 20 rebounds in order for the team to win. He can grow at the pace he wants to grow at. Well, I thought Dave did a great job, but again, you, in David Kravitz's case, he's, he's been, he was a part of a system for so long. Now, all of a sudden, to make that adjustment, and he's, he's probably always had the other guy to go with him. 
we didn't have the experience to go with him now. So, so the adjustments, then you have the target on your back. So I thought it was a little different for the day. But I, I thought he was that guy. He just didn't really shoot threes at the level. But he can make the 15, 17-foot shot. But, but I think in Ivan's case, uh, a guy that can make plays, he can space you out, can shoot the perimeter shot. He shoots the pull-up jump shot. And he makes plays off the dribble. So now it really depends on who's defending him. And we'll put him in position to make plays. Yeah, it wasn't really the ball on the floor. Like yes. Maybe Ivan is capable of it, yeah. right? Yes, probably not. But again, similar guys on what they do. They can make shots. Uh, but Ivan's probably more suited at putting the ball on the floor at this stage than David was. Yeah. You are real heavy on the wings. Yeah. Um, are you tempted to play him with four perimeter guys? Or do you want to play one of the two bigs alongside him? We'll always play our bigs. But I, I think what happens. I give you an example, like you play against a team like Oregon, where Cook was a played center for him at six six. Well, you have to go small. I mean, and, and so now small meaning he'll have to guard Cook. So you you have two forwards and guards out there playing. But if there's a traditional big guy, we like to have our bigs guard a traditional big. So you can, it depend on matchups. Yes, you yes. Can, you can see using both those yes. Oh, yes. It depends on who we're playing against and where can we gain an advantage. Yes. Are Cam and, and Kingsley along? Splitting 30 minutes a game at most? Or? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I see that. They're playing well. Cam's playing really well. Uh, King's playing a lot better. Um, both of those guys are getting stronger. But I, I see those guys playing a lot of minutes. Is there any update on, on where Tyrone's at? Not right now. Uh, we met, and again, it's just it's his call and no pressure. So he, he might tell you guys before he tells me. So. I just, I, again, I try to give him a peace of mind to make his decision when he's ready to make the decision. And I just gave him my pros and cons on that sort of thing. We talk about it, and then we'll go from there. Have you talked to him about it since your class was announced? No, 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 no. And you will have, at this point, you have two more to give, I believe. Are you expect to use all four of them this fall? And this spring, is there somebody else? I wouldn't rule it out. Uh, so there are definitely guys, yes. There are definitely guys we're recruiting. There are guys that might transfer in. So I, I, I wouldn't rule it out at all. Is there a particular type of player you're looking for, say, for the last spot? Uh, a guy that can score the ball if you get a good transfer coming in. I think more than anything, a guy that can help us. But it could be a guy that's you know, transferring in and sitting out of here. In terms of the position? Not really. Line. Not really. But it, it could be a. Yes, could be. Mm -hmm. So you ate, uh, took your family to uh, the old yeller? I wish I could have, but we couldn't. We couldn't go. Oh, okay. We couldn't go. Per NCAA rules, we couldn't. Can you go now? Oh, yeah, I'll go eat there. <laughs> <laughs> We ate as a team at uh, Barney's. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's exciting times. Can you talk about Tyson Jolly a little bit? 6'4", athletic, tough. No, he's, one, he's one of the few guys I think that I've recruited uh, that reminds me a lot of myself in a lot of ways. Just a guy that competes, plays hard, he battles. He challenges his teammates. and. The way he challenges his teams and teammates in high school, I, I like. I like it. Uh, it's not very demonstrative. He doesn't really get on them, but he really pushes guys to get better. He wants to win. He's got to make sacrifices for his team. He's got to, on that high school level, score 30 points a night. But he's willing to do what his team needs to be successful. He's def he loves to defend, loves to play hard, loves to compete, rebounds the basketball, makes shots. I like being around him and I like watching him play. Is your better situated going forward now to play the way you want to play in terms of? Physical defensive pressure, not necessarily yes. a physical giant, but, yes. but coming at people and, yes. and, and, and having some depth in that two or three spots. Yes, because I, I think the biggest key, you have to have good guards in order to advance and be successful. Your guards have to be, understand what you're trying to do to be able to defend, take care of the basketball, make decisions with the basketball, and at the end of the day, be able to make free throws. Does Tyson fit that, I guess? In particular, the toughness, is that a reason you're... Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. I mean, just, just his toughness level, the way he competes. Um, our guys really like the way he, he defended and how he played with them. But I, I think he'll, got, he'll be a guy that 
be ready to play from day one. What do you envision for your team next season? What kind of a jump do you think you can make? I think we'll fight for the top spot. If, you, if you're healthy, I think that's the biggest key. You have to be healthy first and foremost. And if you have the parts to do that, I mean, that's the goal. And I think when you put teams together, you position yourself, you want to be the last team standing. I think that's very important. Uh, and I think outside of the fact that staying away from injuries and those sorts of things, you put yourself in a position to do that. And if you, um, if Tyrone leaves, do you feel like you're going to need more help I like Sam and Brandon, uh, but again, we always win all your options. But I like Sam and Brad. I like their growth. I like the way they're looking right now. Would you be tempted to, to not give out that last spot until you know what he's going to do? Not really, because they're, they're guys we've identified. I mean, it's just what we do. You have, you have to be prepared, prepared for every situation. So we locked in on certain guys, and then we'll just kind of see what happens there.